The New Orleans Pelicans, easily the most frustrating team in the NBA. What they do, how they manage to lose, I don't really know. It's an art in itself. Like, you've got to give credit to them. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But I mean, sorry, Pelicans fans, but seriously, Brandon Ingram, a 90% free throw shooter, missing two back-to-back free throws in the clutch. Nikhil Alexander-Walker dropping a chest pass. A chest pass. I've coached seven-year-olds that catch those regularly, routinely. And he dropped it. So I'm not going to try to put all the blame on those two players because it was a team effort to blow that kind of a lead when you had a 99.8% probability or something like that to win the game. And you've done it 11 times now blowing double digit leads. It was definitely a team effort. It's not on two people, but boy, oh boy, what a way to blow a game. Sorry, Pelicans fans. But without talking about that right away, we're going to start by talking about Zion Williamson and the lack of foul calls. I didn't think I'd be sitting here making a video talking about one individual player and how he doesn't get enough foul calls. I didn't think that's what I'd be doing, but it's just come to the point where I've seen it all season long and it's like, is it going to stop? It doesn't seem like it is. It seems like it's just getting worse. You would have thought after people have talked about it, Stan Van Gundy's talked about it. Even Zion said, yeah, look, there's been a few frustrating calls and he doesn't call out anything. He just said he could still be better. He's still been frustrated with it. You'd think maybe they eventually start to fix it. Well, I've seen nothing to suggest that they're getting the right calls on Zion Williamson. It's getting to a point where it's just ridiculous. He's getting hacked every time he goes to the room and it's pretty easy because they realize they're not going to call a foul. So before I get into that, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I make content like this every single single day and doing so really does help. It would also help pay for my haircut that is clearly needed right now because it's getting out of order. But just getting back to the Zion point, if you were to just look at free throws attempted a game and see someone in his second year averaging eight attempts a game, that's pretty good. What's wrong with it? That's enough. He doesn't need any more. He doesn't need to be averaging 12 to 15. I mean, he should be because of the amount of fouls, but the issue is he's getting tackled on every damn possession. I'm not exaggerating. He is getting tackled half the time. He's getting his arms slapped. Defenders have a free reign to just go, let me smack Zion. And if the ball comes out, that's a win. But if the ball doesn't come out, it's probably not going to be a foul anyway. Unless we just like genuinely tackle him or wrap him up or make clear and obvious contact. I mean, clear and obvious contact because it's clear and obvious contact half the time. But unless it's really obvious, we're getting away with it. So why not give it a chance? And that's what's happening to him pretty much every possession he attacks the rim. And I think it says a lot about the league because players just seem to get so much more reward for shooting fouls. Even someone like Joel Embiid, a big man, gets most of his free throws off drawing the defenders with that little drag through. Damian Lillard, I'm not someone who complains about the foul call. Like they slapped his hand. There's nothing wrong with that to the rule book. That's a clear foul. But you've got Trey Young, Damian Lillard, Luka Doncic, all the guards, you know the ones. And I don't have a problem with these guys looking for contact because that's the reality. If that's the rules, you're going to use the rules to your advantage and they do it. There's nothing wrong with it. People saying, oh, it ruins the game. Fix the game then fix the rules. It's not up to them to decide the rules. They're the ones who play the game. And if they can get away with jumping into players, lunging forward a meter into players, still the most ridiculous thing in the league. You have someone who's just off the ground for a fraction and they jump forward and just get a fraction of their shoulder pad or something. And it's free throws for them. That's what guys are doing in the league right now. They're looking for contact. They are seeking it actively, more actively than ever before. And they're getting rewarded more often than not. Yet someone who's attacking the rim with ferocity, someone who attacks the rim unlike anyone else in the NBA currently and to a degree that clearly no one can stop it, which is why he continues to get fouled. It's just left with crickets. The referees go Stevie Wonder. Sorry to disrespect the legend. Ah, he doesn't mind. The referees go Stevie Wonder when he's attacking the rim. Yet when these guards are jumping into defenders who are just off the ground for a fraction of a second and just sneeze on them, they touch them on the wrist, they flick them on the wrist, someone in the crowd starts coughing, someone heckles them, it's three free throws, yet Zion Williamson decides to get tackled NFL style, it's nothing. I just don't quite understand. The thing what makes Zion so great is because, like I mentioned, he attacks the basket at full speed and he doesn't go searching for fouls. He's not someone that is looking for the contact. Well, not in that way. He's looking to knock you over, but he's not looking for the contact. He'll knock you to the floor, but he's not looking to get free throws. He's just looking to get points and buckets, which he so often does. But that's what makes it so good. He's not flailing his arms up in the air when he gets fouled. 
he just goes on with his business. But I think people are taking that for granted. Referees are taking that for granted. And I look at a sport like soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. I think of a sport like that and players exaggerate contact in that sport. I think we all know that they exaggerate contact a lot. A lot. It's ridiculous. It's terrible. I like the sport, but the exaggerated contact is absolutely awful. But in particular, where they exaggerate contact, and recently more often than not, is in the penalty box. And that's for two reasons. For one, you're a lot more likely to get a penalty if you get touched and you go down. Because for whatever reason, the referees don't realize that they go down at the drop of a hat. They'll just go down commando roll on any kind of occurrence. If you click your fingers there into a commando roll and spinning for 10 seconds, but that's neither here nor there, they do this for two reasons. Because if you do get clipped at the same force, maybe even with more force, and you stay on your feet, you don't get foul calls. I've seen it multiple times. They won't get a penalty, even if it's the exact same force. They need to go into commando rolls and do it tens consecutive times to get the penalty. Whereas if you stay on your feet, you're not getting rewarded. You're not getting rewarded for doing what you should be doing and trying to play on through the contact. Now we're seeing that kind of with the NBA, obviously not to the degree of soccer, but it's still getting to that kind of degree where it's it seems like the players that are getting rewarded are the ones that are seeking for contact, are the ones that are flailing their arms, flopping around, putting their arms up in the air and waving around, complaining to the refs, all the things that you don't want to see. At least I speak for myself. Pretty sure you guys don't want to see it any either. All of these things are the things that are getting rewarded. Not someone who's attacking the rim with force and not looking for contact or looking for fouls, but just looking to score the basket. And on his way happens to get hacked by about three separate players at a time. The thing is, I'm not looking for Zion to get 15 free throws a game, which he probably could be averaging if they called every ticky tack a foul like they do for everyone else in the league. That's kind of what I'm talking about, like they do for everyone else in the league. That's my point. If you're going to have one rule for all except one player in the league, it doesn't exactly make sense. Is it the Zion rules? Are we officiating Zion Williamson like he's in the NFL, like he's a running back? And then are we going to officiate other guys like they're playing soccer? That seems to be the difference I'm seeing. I know obviously that's exaggerated but you get my point i don't have videos for it unfortunately the nba decides to copyright that kind of stuff or block the video as a whole which i don't really want to happen so i don't have those kind of videos but if you've watched the game you know what's happening it's pretty clear watch any game you'll see it at least three or four times a game where he'll get hacked pretty much all of his missed shots are fouls i'm not even gonna lie i genuinely say that like he would probably be shooting 75 to 80 percent from the floor if he wasn't getting fouled on those missed shots, I swear. And it's clear fouls, he gets hacked and nothing comes of it. So is it the Zion rules? Do the refs decide that they treat him like he's a New Orleans Saint players and the other guys like they're playing in the English Premier League or what's the other, the MLS? What do I want to achieve by saying all of this? Fix your game up. I don't mind if the rules are going to be tougher and players don't get every kind of foul, but you can't have one player getting hacked and a number of other players getting touched, getting flicked on the wrist, and all of a sudden that's three free throws or two free throws or a technical foul, an ejection, a flagrant foul, any number of things for doing absolutely nothing. And then another player is getting hacked blatantly all game long and doesn't get the rewards. I mean, it's just, you've got to show some consistency at least. If it's going to be terrible rules, at least be consistent with the rules. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. So that's my thoughts on Zion Williamson and the lack of foul calls he's getting. Yeah, eight free throws a game. It seems nice it's not enough. It's not enough for what these rules suggest he should be getting. And that's probably upwards of 12. I'm not going to lie. He should be getting the most free throws in the NBA. When you consider how he plays the game, how physical he is, and how many points a game he scores in the paint, it just makes sense that he would be getting the most free throws in the league. But moving on from that and touching on the Pelicans briefly, like what needs to be more apparent to this team? I know I'm still talking about Zion, but what more does it take for the Pelicans to realize, hmm, how about our best player, our best scorer? Someone who does still get to the line. I know I just talked about how he doesn't get to it enough, but he still gets to the line because the referees eventually have to call some of it. How about we give it to him? Like, here's the clutch statistics, which I don't think are the best stats. They're a bit weird. It's five minutes left in the game. It's either five points either way, I believe. They're just not the best stats. But anyways, it basically, close games, last five minutes, clutch statistics. Zion's shooting 52%, nearly 80% from the line, and two and a half points a game on just one and a half attempts. In the last five minutes of the game, he's averaging one and a half attempts a game in that period of time. So there's games where he'll shoot one shot, two shots, zero shots. 
That's the kind of things we're working with, yet he's putting up good numbers. Not absolutely amazing numbers, but they're good numbers. They're towards the top of the NBA, as you'd expect for Zion. And then you look at Brandon Ingram, on the other hand, who's averaging over two shots a game, is shooting under 30% from the field and 25% from three. Zion is also averaging more assists in that period of time, like he's playmaking for his teammates, he's creating looks, he's getting to the free throw line at a better rate, he's turning the ball over less. I'm not trying to slander Brandon Ingram because he gets enough of that for what he's been doing, but come on. Like, what else do we need to see? The stats, the eye test, the game, everything you need to look at it, to dissect it, either way you do it, it's just clear who the ball should be going to in clutch situations. Even in the Portland Trailblazers game, we just saw he got the ball twice down the stretch, Zion, and he scored on both occasions. Maybe keep doing it. Keep feeding him. He's a big boy. He needs to eat. Eh, I don't know about that kind of wording, but whatever. You get the point. Just fix this, Stan. This is an issue that has been going on and has been clearly an issue for so long, yet how many games into the season are we? How many blown leads are we into it? And we still see the same thing arise. And it's like the numbers back it up that Zion is a pretty good clutch performer. And Brandon Ingram, more to the point, is absolutely awful. Other than that, the New Orleans Pelicans are still the same mess that I was talking about just before. Jackson A's is getting better minutes and he's been really good. When people say, oh, why do you hate the Pelicans? No, the reason I get mad at a team like the Pelicans, you don't see me getting mad at every other team in the league because I don't care about a lot of other teams in the league. I like the Pelicans, and so when they lose, I actually get frustrated. That's the only reason I'll rant about the Pelicans. I'm not going to rant about every team in the league. I'll rant about a few certain teams because I like those teams. Give Zion Williamson some more damn free throws. Come on, referees. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? How more obvious does it need to be? Can we not get to the point where he has to be flailing his arms, where he has to be complaining about every other foul call like all the stars in the league do? He's literally one of the only stars in the league that doesn't complain every single time they get hacked. Can we not get to that point? Can we just prevent that and start calling some of the blatant fouls? So let's not get to that stage. Anyways, have a good day. Catch you next time. Bye. Like the video. <laughs>